In this video, we are going to go over the difference between a shin splint and a stress fracture and how to kind of tell the difference so that you know how to move forward and how to manage it. Okay, so let me start with a little bit of anatomy. So here's the front of our shin. Both of these conditions, a shin splint and a stress fracture, can often be in the lower legs. That's why they are very often misdiagnosed and confused for each other. So for a um, shin splint, what it is, is the inflammation of these muscles that kind of run up and down the shin and attach onto the tibia, okay? So that is the main one there, the tibialis anterior. And then there's also, so you can see it kind of attaches up on the top of the tibia there. And then also it can be this extensor digitorum longus, which attaches up at the top there as well. Um, and what happens is those muscles just get overused and start to get inflamed, just like any other type of inflammation that happens in the body. Um, so with a shin splint, the main um, diagnostic indicator is that it, you're gonna feel this up and down usually the entire length of the shin. So the typical rule of thumb is that it's greater than five centimeters in length, okay? So that's the number one thing to look for. Like is the discomfort um, broad and all the way up and down the shin or is it point tender and very specific? Okay, so for shin splints, that's the first way to indicate. The second thing is that is going to be how it feels based on your activity level. So if you are exercising or running or doing your sport, typically a shin splint will usually feel better as you use it and kind of warm up that muscle and kind of use it a little bit and get it warm. Just like if you were to warm up before any kind of other activity, it usually feels better when your muscles are warm. So if you like wake up in the morning or you've been resting for a long time, that's typically when you'll feel the most pain with a shin splint. So if that's what you're, you are experiencing, then that may be what it is, okay? Um, another thing to look for is, is it bilateral on both sides or is it on one side? Typically a shin splint can happen on both sides um, because it's often because of weakness and um, incomplete mechanics that are happening with your running or with your sport. So a lot of times you'll feel it on both sides. So those are the main things to kind of look for for the shin splint. Also important to know that if that's what you think it is, you can often keep training through it as opposed to a stress fracture, which we're gonna cover, you really can't. So if you are kind of fitting into this category that I'm describing, it's usually okay to keep training and running through it to an extent, as long as you are getting treatment and working on the problem and making sure that you're working to solve it and not just ignoring it and hoping that it goes away. Okay, so a stress fracture on the other hand, if we look at this, usually is, a, is going to happen right on this tibia here. It can happen in other places too, but in this comparison, it will usually be right on the tibia, so right on this shin bone. And it's like a tiny little micro fracture in the bone is what a stress fracture actually is. So um, typically what you will feel, like I was kind of alluding to before with a stress fracture, is that is it, it is a very point tender spot along that um, ridge of the tibia and, or the shin bone, and it is less than five centimeters in length is the general rule of thumb. So it's a smaller surface area. And then also, with a stress fracture, when you're looking at your activity, you are going to feel, um, usually it will get worse as you use it or activate it more. So every step you take is typically more painful with a shin splint because there's a fracture in there. Um, and then obviously the other main thing that we're gonna talk about is that with a shin splint, it usually will require, or I'm sorry, a stress fracture, it usually will require some period of rest or immobilization in, in order to heal it. You can't just keep training through it with a fracture. Um, and another thing, as I mentioned before, the shin splint will be oftentimes bilateral, both sides, versus a stress fracture will usually only be on one side. It's pretty rare to have a bilateral stress fracture. Um, so based on those kind of little rules of thumb that will hopefully help you figure out what direction you're leaning towards and hopefully help determine like what you need to do. Um, the, stress, the stress fracture will often be um, diagnosed via an x-ray or an MRI. Um, so if that's what you think it is, you can either go to a physical therapist and try to get some info, um, get a second opinion, or you can go and 
figure it out based on the imaging. So that would be the next step there. Versus with the shin splints, like I said, um, just need a little bit of guidance, a little bit of strengthening usually, and you're usually able to train through it. So hopefully that gave you some valuable information. If you are suffering with some shin pain and you're really on the fence, not sure, maybe you have a little bit of symptoms of each, then please reach out to us. We would love to help figure it out and get you back in the game.